Hello. Uh, good morning, Sriram. Yeah, good morning. Okay, so uh, on the first day, we have seen only the integration between the ERP to the UWM, right? I mean, like, we didn't touch about the configuration part in the UWM side, I believe. Yes, sir. Mm. So probably we will start doing that today, and then we will see the configuration part, okay? I mean, like, the other uh, settings. So now, when we were doing, let me just have a recap of what we have done on the day one. So we only have created a simple log structure like our plant organizations and purchase organizations and the warehouse and the storage locations. On top of that, we have created the uh, a dummy warehouse number of an ERP one, and that dummy warehouse number we have configured the settings in such a way that telling that okay, it's an extended warehouse management. And then we are trying to distribute immediately. And then we have created the distribution model. This is what we have done on the day one, right? Hello. And log logical system and the configuration ah, yeah. part. We have seen about what is a logical systems and uh, what are the logical systems of an ERP and what are the logical systems of an EWM system. This is what we have seen. Now, the same way, even in the EWM system means normally if it is in the decentralized one, we would be logging it in a decentralized versions actually because this complete part, whatever we have normally, normally what we can say is we used to have earlier like a ECC in a separate box and EWM in a separate box. So we used to log into EWM separately and then we used to configure these settings. But now as being it is an embedded one, we are trying to treat this as an the same box but still we are having this particular things like what extended warehouse management and all the config whatever we see there the same thing has been replaced into this box okay however now we win we have to perform the same settings now if you come to this particular node below the logistics execution we can see this is an extended warehouse management in this extended warehouse management go to this interfaces erp integration now we have to perform our own configuration here okay general settings and delivery processing on top of that goods movement production will come into the picture later but these are the three things which we will be having now from 9.2 three i can say that there is another option called as a tool based erp integration okay where we can use this tool based also but we need to have a solution manager for that where we have to upload it means the basic org structures okay what we can do is instead of doing it manually we'll be having a template based on that particular template we will be uploading it okay this is the system connections on the warehouse integrations means the standard whenever we are trying to configure any of the warehouses or any of the plants normally what we have we'll be having a thousand plant or a thousand company code but in the s4 the same way also we'll be having it here also we can do this using the tool based also but normally for this particular tool based we will not recommend it as being that all the configurations will not be configured based on that so normally we always go with manual settings only but this option also is available if in case if you want to do that with the solution manager content okay this is a different thing now coming to the our one settings here you can see that we have to define this define own business system define business system map warehouse numbers from erp system to the ewm and assign rfc destinations and all so now there is one significance if you can see this difference in the erp side we have defined something called as a logical system but when it comes to this particular uh, 
thing what i mean to say that is uh, in ewm system we'll call it as a business system guys if you see that right in the erp side we will be calling it as a logical system if you remember hello guys do you remember that yeah, yes 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 you can remember that yeah so there is a significance even for that as well okay so defining of a business system and logical system both were basically same but ideally here what is that is there is why the, we were trying to have this as a business system there is a significance of that as well i'll explain you when we are trying to do our deliveries i mean at the time of an inbound deliveries and outbound deliveries you i'll tell you what is the significance of that actually in general what is that is because we will be having multiple erp systems getting assigned to a one business system means multiple logical systems can be assigned to one business system you agree I mean, like what i'm trying to say here hello hello uh, multiple logical systems to one business systems means i mean are, are from the same instance or from the different instances different instances different instances i'm talking here now okay means i'm mean, like can you just uh, tell me what exactly that you can understand here here i can understand there will be a uh, logical systems will be from from erp side we can call it a yes. logical systems exactly yeah so different logical systems we can connect to the uh, one business system but i understand mm. but these are from the same instance that's what i understand but sometimes yes sometimes as i said that we might be having a landscape also in such a cases that you would be using your ecc as your normal erp1 but your ewm as your embedded ewm you getting my point yes yeah okay so in such in such cases also i was talking about that in normally if it is in between the embedded one it would be the same there is no difference in that okay it is only one to one relationship basically okay yeah so but anyhow i'll i'll, I'll explain you that much detail in when we go into the detail because the the significance of having this is normally if you are having a multiple logical systems that multiple logical systems will be assigned to a single business system that is what the significance as of now i'll tell you but when i show you in detail in that the time of the delivery level we will understand that okay because a multiple erp instances can be connected to a ewm system that is what this particular significance what i'm trying to say here is okay okay yeah so this is even basically the part of the basis configuration only which where we will not be doing anything much here okay so we will define one business system actually normally so where is this here we oh, sorry we cannot see this particular one actually because we are trying to it's only the bp1 clnt 400 we will be doing it normally okay but you can see this t41 awm 400 is the system which we are trying to define here and we are trying to assign it however now the very first setting what we are trying to do here is map warehouse numbers from erp to the ewm system okay now what is my warehouse number of an erp it's w46 agree but ewm warehouse number we haven't configured it yet so first thing is we have to make sure that sorry our ewm configuration should be in place here okay a same extended warehouse management master data defined warehouse numbers you can do it in two different ways either you define the warehouse number here first okay and then you copy it from the standard warehouse number it's double zero one or whatever it is if not we can directly do in such a way that goods receipt process so now if i want to define one warehouse number let's see what happens here 
now i'll be defining something of wm46 we don't have that here you see so what i try to do here is cross browse settings copy warehouse number customizing uh, maybe i'll take from my standard warehouse which i which is this copied from triple zero one okay i'll make it to wm46 okay Uh, Serum, this is the uh, as a function consultant first. This mm. is the first step, right? Creation of warehouse yes. number. Creation of the warehouse. That's what we have to do. Okay. So we so, have so far. So far, uh, uh, all all our uh, basis consultant will do. Mm. As also whatever. whatever the configuration I have told, like the uh, logical systems or the business systems or the RFC connections and all, we will not even touch in the real time because we will not even have the access to do that okay it's only for our understanding and it's only for the sake of our understanding only i've just told you that okay we will not touch anything as as part of a functional consultant we will be only defining the master data such as your warehouse or your uh, uh, master data of your erp side that's what we try to do and then we tried configuring it okay yeah. okay only thing in that configuration whatever we have discussed in the last class is we will be creating the control parameters of your warehouse if you remember that we will be telling to your warehouse that whether it could be a decentralized warehouse management or whether it could be a normal warehouse management or whether it could be your extended one if you remember it that setting we'll be doing it and as well as we will be telling that whether the particular delivery i'm sorry uh, distribution model i've said there will be five apps the standard five apps right so that we have to create that is our part only again okay okay so now if you go to this master data define warehouse numbers wm46 earlier if you check that we don't have this even right now it is coming so it's either the way first you define the warehouse and then you copy it or you directly copy it doesn't matter anything okay so what i'll do is uh, Karthik here. Uh, yeah, Karthik. So, when we copy Veros, do we have any dependencies? No. What dependencies do you want to have? Uh, so, uh, sorry, uh, I'm basically from ST. So, when we mm. do copy any, ma I mean, a master data like that, mm. shipping point or anything, we have a lot of dependencies which will be copied uh, based no, on. No, 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 not required. See, as of now, even in an ST also, we will be having your standard sales organizations or your distribution channel or you will be having your divisions, right? That's a standard yes. pretty much. From that, you will be copying it to your own organizational data. Even the same way here, the SAP will be providing you as a dummy warehouse number. Means why were, why were we copying it? Basically because we do not want to touch the standard one as being the standard tables and the standard configuration will not get affected. That's only the reason, okay? Why we, okay. because instead of that only we were copying it because we need to, we never knew that where all the tables we have to map it or where all the configuration has to be getting affected and all. So normally in any general practice, what we do is we will make use of that standard one and we will make our own customization. That's it. For copying it, there won't be any dependencies as such. But however, we required when we are trying to configure your own organizational structure, then that point of time, you might, you will be required such as whatever you said like your shipping points or whatever it is that would be required yes at that point of time it is required anyhow okay yeah uh, thanks yeah. so it is only for the purpose because we will be having so many tables which needs to be copied in the back end that's the reason we will be making use of that particular standard one okay that's it okay thank yeah. you any other questions here because normally when we try to copy your company code or your plant in your erp side or the same way any of these things what we do we generally make use of the thousand one right that's what even i'm trying to do because when i copied when i've activated it i have done it in the triple zero one but i don't want to make any changes of that that's the reason i'm copying it from double zero one which i have done it earlier that's it okay
So, okay. Any questions here, uh, Mohan or anyone? Questions as of now. Okay. So this is the first thing. Okay, one second. Okay. We have defined our warehouse as of now. Now interfaces. ERP integration, goods movement, map storage locations. Sorry, I, I guess coming to too early here. First thing is general settings. Okay, first thing what I'm trying to do is map warehouse numbers from ERP system to the EWM system. As of now, what they have done is they have given the business system and as well as the logical system under the same name here. The basis guys have given it under the same name. Normally, it would be in two different naming conventions. Okay, so here what I'm trying to do here is W46 is my ERP warehouse number. WM46 is my EWM warehouse number. This is what I'm trying to map it over here, guys. The very first thing. Okay, and once we do that here, okay, what are we going to do here after that? Anyhow, we have to see the number ranges for the ERP deliveries or the ERP documents, which will come back again step by step. Okay. Now, goods movement. Okay. What is this goods movement here? Map storage locations from ERP system to the EWM system. Means, if you remember that, guys, we have created two different storage locations. If you remember that, I've told you that it would be 1030 and 1040. I hope uh, that's clear right? because we have created two different storage locations, right? Yeah, so the significance of that we I'll tell you that maybe later not as of now. So what I'm trying to do here is okay. If you remember that in ERP also, we will be having the same set of settings. Like whenever we create any kind of your storage locations, what we do there, we will try to assign your plant and you'll try to assign your storage locations there. Agree? The same way, even in the EWM system as well, we will try to have two different things here. So my plant is WM46, I'm sorry. The storage location would be 1030 and okay law business system and the warehouse number is wm46 additionally we have a concept called as an availability group in the ewm system okay which we will discuss wm46 the other one is 1040 okay wm46 so when i'm trying to assign this if you see that system is trying to throw you an error telling that no unique partner was found what was this partner again so system is expecting some kind of a master data in the system what is that master data it's something it's expecting some kind of an unique partner was not found if you see this you see what happened there is no information available so it is not allowing us just remember this error as of now because this configuration anyhow we will be seeing it next now okay maybe first there are few things to explain so after that maybe in tomorrow i'll be configuring this just remember this okay i'm just saving it as of now so once we've created this particular master data and all this will automatically will be coming it over here okay just remember this other case now when i'm trying to tell you something of the master data here the very first thing in the ewm system we need to understand few things like what what is the supply chain unit okay and what is the party entitled to dispose and what is the custodian and who is the owner so these are the four different terminologies which we need to understand as of now okay to make sure that okay what we are trying to do one second
Okay, so here the very first thing what I'm trying to do is okay. Okay. What happened? It got stuck to me. One second, guys. It's not allowing. So now I don't know what happened, it got stuck or something. It's not allowing me to I'll make use of Notepad. So what we were trying to discuss here, the very first thing is the supply chain unit. We need to create this basically, the very first thing. But before creating, I'm just trying to explain you what is it, okay? So however, the second thing is we have something called as an party entity okay we'll come like this okay we'll we need to understand what is a custodian and then we need to understand who is the owner and the fourth one is we need to understand who is your party entitled to dispose i'm just putting it in a shortcut PETD. okay these are the four things before we need to understand in the ewm system guys okay so here what is the supply chain unit? Okay. Now, this supply chain unit in the EWM, it's the hierarchy level for us. Like what is it is, it will try to create a kind of an organizational data. But however, what exactly it represents in the EWM system? This particular supply chain unit is nothing but it is a geographical location of your warehouse okay so geographical location of your warehouse in the sense what does that mean here means sometimes your warehouse premises could be at your plant location only agree or sometimes it would be somewhere else I agree guys hello yes yeah. So normally I'm just talking in generally. Oh, oh, okay. So if in case if you want to track your warehouse location or if you want to have your kind of your warehouse, what exactly we'll be doing it. Okay. So basically what happens is it is a supply chain. What we are trying to do in a specific in the EWM system, but we do not have this particular concept in the WM side, guys. Okay. We only have this in the EWM side. Why are we doing it? Also, I'll tell you. However, okay so this supply chain unit whatever it is it is mainly will it be helpful in ewm system to it's a kind of a geographical location means it is nothing but it is a kind of a physical or a kind of an organizational unit whatever it is that we are representing that in the ewm system okay you're getting my point here any questions now so in generally what we can say that is this is nothing but it's a kind of a geographical location where we will be having for your warehouse and however this will be locate i mean like this would be helping you as in such a way that we will be creating this warehouse in multiple ways multiple ways in the sense what can anyone tell me here guys sometimes you might be renting a third party logistics agree Hello. Am I right? Uh, yes, yes, yes. It's not like every time we will be using your own warehouse. Sometimes we will be having your own. Uh, sorry, you would be even using this one also. Why this is not working? I don't understand. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, in this case, exactly, you can have a multiple one all as well. Yeah, agree that. But multiple in the sense, how are we gonna give it? In the EWM system, I'm trying to have, okay, maybe I'll come back here. So this supply chain unit, whatever it is, WM46, let's assume that we'll be having one. So there would be two cases here. What are those two cases? Let's take off this one. So the first one would be, 
you will be using your plant location as your warehouse location agree with that my, with my statement of this one guys means the first one would be where you can make use of your plant location as your warehouse location right what is that i refer to means the warehouse is located in the plant premises i mean to say that agree everyone or uh, it's not clear uh, mohan naga or anyone it's clear yeah it's clear. sometimes if in case if i am trying to use let's take an example now here case okay maybe okay in case okay let's assume that our company is some in a kind of a manufacturing of bulbs okay maybe we'll take in vipro only in vipro what happens here is sometimes they might not be having their own warehouses they might be renting a third party logistics also right so in the case one the plant location let's assume that i'm using okay my plant as a vipro okay just take an example here as Vipro is having many products. So in the, in such a case, what we can do is the very first thing in my case where my plant location and my warehouse location are the same. Agree? Then the location for the geographical location of a warehouse would be what? It would be my plant one. So what is my plant here? It's this, right? Is that clear now? If not, if we were using some kind of a third party logistics one, which is Siva or something, okay? So in such a case, what happens then? Then the geographical location would be the Siva one. It can't be a Vipro one, right? You're getting my point here? Or it's not? Let me know. Guys. Anyone in the call, please let me know. You yeah, got it. Yeah. It can't be a two geographical locations. Ah, yes. Two geographical locations in the sense you will be having your plant in a different location and warehouse in a different location. Yes. So basically what we are trying to do here is we are trying to tell to the system that okay what kind of a locations we are having it because basically supply chain unit is nothing but it is of a geographical location of your warehouse that is what we are trying to do here that's it okay so either it could be a case a you will be using your plant location as your warehouse location or either it could be your plant b I mean, like the case B, I'm sorry, where you will be using your 3PL location. So in these cases, every supply chain unit, whatever I'm trying to do here, will be represented with a role. Means what does that mean? If it is a plant location, I'll be having 1001 role. Okay. If it is a warehouse location, normally it would be having 1008. Means what does that mean? This supply chain unit can be created in multiple ways one is automatically the other one is manually okay so both the cases are same why are we doing if it is in the case of an automatically what happens is we will try to make use of the plant one and the same data will be getting transferred to the ewm and it could be created with the role of a 1001 but in case of a case b what happens is we will be transferring we will not be transferring it we will be creating it manually in the system okay in the ewm system in the same i mean to say that clear now the first case it's it's only i'm trying to give you an overview case i'm not trying to create anything as of now today but what is what i'm just trying to help you out here okay any questions here Hello. No questions, uh, so you can continue. 
yeah yeah we can see that i'll try to create that no problem once we okay. started creating it i'll show you both the scenarios means how does it happens and how does it go ahead okay i'll show you that both the things not an issue okay so wh why am i doing this also I'll, I'll tell you what is the significance of this okay why we have to do it also i'll tell you that now in the ewm system what we are trying to do here is we will be having something called as a custodian means who is this custodian basically and who is this war now in any of the ewm system this custodian and the owner and the supply chain unit we will not see it anywhere actually means either at your transactional level or either at your any kind of level you will not see we will always refer to party entitled to dispose only okay but however why we have to assign do this i'll tell you that now this particular uh what do you say that custodian who is this custodian here hello sorry i lost something in between guess can you hear me hello yeah, custodian is the one who keeps and maintain the staff. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm just trying to come there, but I'm not sure whether you guys are able to hear me or not. Yeah, so custodian is the one who is the owner of the warehouse in a simple terminology. Means what I'm trying to see here, owner of the warehouse means who is that? In, in the case A, who will be the owner guys? it would be obviously the plant vipro I agree everyone because the owner of the warehouse will be is the one who keeps it but in the case b it can't be the vipro it would be the siva you're getting my point yes exactly so the owner of the warehouse means who is having it but however there is another thing owner who is this owner this is nothing but owner is what he is the owner of the stock means in both the cases it would be only who it would be people only agree because it's the owner of the stock actually am i clear here everyone so now come to the other point here party entitled to dispose means party entitled to dispose is nothing but he is the one who tells the custodian means who tells the custodian what to do but means in generally what happens is party entitled to dispose is nothing but who has the authority to produce the stock and as well as to dispose the stock also who has authority in this case so it would be only the plant means in my case it would be only vipro because he is the one who is producing the stock and who is disposing the stock right so this is what we are trying to make it clear here getting it guys or any questions now everyone yeah so this is just the master data which i am trying to create so far okay just let me know in case if you have any questions here Okay, in, to anyone, uh, Naga or Karthik or Hanganapati or anyone. So normally this is how we will be doing it. But why are we doing it? Let me come to the system wise now. So once we have defined it here, okay. This particular master data, assign warehouse numbers. So WM46, in this particular one, if you see this, we have to assign 
the warehouse numbers here this for this particular wm46 what we are trying to do here we need to tell who is your supply chain unit okay and we need to tell who is the custodian and who is the party entitled to dispose and default ship to so these are the configurations which we have to set as a default here you are getting my point here everyone guys hello yeah so these are the ones which we will be assigning it to our warehouse and we will be telling but however there is one thing here default party entitled to this this field we will only make use of only once when you are having your plant and your warehouse as a one to one relationship means if your plant is having a multiple warehouses or your warehouse is having a multiple plants assignment i'm sorry so we have said i'm sorry so if your warehouse is being assigned to a multiple plants then you will not assign this default one because if you are trying to assign your supply chain unit or your custodian or whatever it is this one it would be the because this would be the same custodian would be always the owner of the warehouse there is no change in that supply chain unit it would be always the geographical location of your warehouse same way but when it comes to your party entitled to dispose this would be a change here means what is that change because plants because maybe if your warehouse is assigned to a multiple plants then obviously you will be having a different party entitled to dispose agree with me guys hello uh, is this i mean uh, you are saying that the possibility of uh, multiple custodian even though we can have a single custodian right no come back uh, see uh, you are saying you, you, we will oh. have uh, for each plant we will have different custodians right no 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 how come no, no, no i'm not talking about the custodians here custodian will be who again again let's take an example he is just the owner of the warehouse right true yeah so in our case the warehouse owner will be who warehouse owner in our case i didn't get it no, can you repeat here if you see this the custodian would be the owner of the warehouse right whether it could be a vipro or whether it could be the siva you okay. are getting my point yes right. yes yeah okay right so in our case what happens it would be the plant because he is the owner sometimes or sometimes it would be a third party logistics agree right okay. now okay. when it comes to a default party entitled to means for your warehouse you will be having only one default party entitled to dispose or you will be having a multiple party entitled to dispose if you are having a multiple plants assignment you will be having the multiple party entitled to dispose agree with me okay no what was the question please go ahead and nothing nothing i am just uh, agreeing to the, your point that's it mm. so coming to your question then you will you be having a multiple custodians or you will be having a single custodian it's depending upon your organization structure there right so depending upon the requirement we decide yes. Oh, what yes. what type of scenario exactly. yes okay and uh, i mean uh, sriram i am basically from hd right if you are okay. telling any uh, wm concept i would like you to no, no, no. i mean this is not a wm back. concepts at all this is all completely new concepts in wm okay. concepts i'll try to compare you okay as i told okay. you earlier this particular concept we do not have it in wm also this is completely okay. new in ewm okay that's the reason i'm trying to tell you this okay if okay, any fine. of the wm concepts i'll tell you that okay this is how the comparison looks like don't worry about that okay okay thank you yeah any other questions here to me default ship to normally we will not use this one guys default ship to is the one where we will be what i mean to say that is um, 
I'm sorry. Uh, maybe if you're having only one kind of a customer, then only we will be using the default ship to. Okay, sometimes uh, uh, for for example, like um, what I can say that if you are manufacturing some kind of a car or accessories or something, and you're only supplying to some Robert Bosch or somewhere or to some kind of another car companies and all, then that point of time we will use it. But normally we will not use the default ship to actually. Okay, we will not touch that even. Okay. 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 Any other questions so far? Guys, is that clear or any questions to me here? So that we can, I'll start creating it. Maybe in tomorrow session, I'll start creating that. But however, are we clear on this particular concepts? Whatever I have said, this is just a master data and all. Right. So I'll once we come back tomorrow, I'll try to show you how to create your supply chain unit. OK, and how to create your custodians and how to create your party and title to dispose and all. So this is just a master data stuff which we will be creating and then we will try to see a simple inbound scenario. Maybe if it works tomorrow. OK, and then we'll see that guys. OK, uh, no, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, please. I think you can go ahead. You can ask. Uh, thanks. Yeah. So uh, I have a generic question. Uh, probably. Mm. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I you might I already said it in the second class, but I didn't attend that, so I'm just taking up this. So uh, when we have the warehouse number, right? It, it, previously, it used to be a three-digit one number. Yes. Mm. Uh, in the uh, system, it would be a three or a four-digit one. Okay. Like uh, maybe in the demo session also I've explained you that. So maybe that's fine. What we can say that is, so the organizational structure can be defined in EWM with either with a three or a four digit one. That's what, okay? So everything, it's with, with three or a four digit one, even the storage type, the sections and all. So this significance anyhow, I'll come back again because we I have only defined it. But after that, there's a lot of things to explain for me. Like what is a storage type? What is a storage section? What is a storage bins and all? So this part is a master data which we have to see in detail. Okay, I'll explain you that. Don't worry. Yeah, because when we integrate right with the mm. ERP integration, we are having yes. only three-digit number. Yes, three-digit one is your ERP warehouse number. Four-digit okay. one is your EWM warehouse number. In EWM, you can. It's not a mandatory that you always want to go ahead with four digit. You can also go ahead. In some cases, where I have seen is the business wants to have the same ERP number as their EWM. So we obviously have to go ahead with three digit because it's all the business call, right? <coughs> So, uh, so uh, I mean, uh -huh. uh, now I am assuming that uh, I mean, basically, why they made all uh, master data and all other stuff, uh, irrespective of modules, uh, for some um, BW level reporting level, right? Yes, basically, so, if you want to have some kind of a differentiation and for your reporting level, they'll be doing it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, that's what my question is. Like, uh, why uh, it that uh, our normal one has three digit number when we have uh, uh, when we, uh, basically EW. to differentiate only that's it, not uh, carpet. Uh, that's the only thing. Apart from that, there won't be any much searching. The thing actually, because the architecture was designed in such a way that EWM should be having a four digit, and this one is going with a three digit. That's it. Okay. And why do we call a master all like all master data as product masters and all other stuff in EWM? No, 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 no. All master data will not call it as a product master. Only the material master only will call it as a product master. The rest of the things will not call it as a product master. No, no, no will not call that. Okay. And why do it? Why do we call it like that? No, because the naming convention was defined in such a way that earlier since from 5.0 the decentralized version because we used to transfer the data basically from ERP to EWM we used to transfer that but now we are not doing it actually because we were in the same instance in the embedded one that's the reason we're not doing it but earlier what happens is 
this planned shipping point customers and the vendors they want to differentiate it with the normal wm and normal erp one so what they have done is the material master they used to call it as a product master here that's it not all the master data now even now the plant and the shipping point will call it as a location customer and the vendor will call it as a business partner that's it because they have changed the naming convention in the ewm system however if you see in the s4 systems as of now every customer and vendor now we will call it as a business partner only we are not calling it as no more as a customer or a vendor we are just calling it as a bp only even in the s4 system so the naming terminologies they are trying to change it that's it but in the back end it would be the same okay thank you no problem now sriram i have one question here yeah please go ahead demo uh, in in ecc different i mean one storage location cannot be as into the different plants same storage location mm -hmm. but but in ewm one warehouse um, i mean one ewm warehouse can be as into the different plants one come back again i'm sorry no in ecc one storage location i mean same storage location cannot be as mm. into the different plants okay fine uh -huh. but uh. in ewm warehouse mm can we assign to the different plans okay so but however you can assign that yes we can do but however the party entitled to dispose will be different here right yes we can do that because the party entitled to dispose will be completely different so what does that happen so nothing you can do that okay okay see you yeah anyhow tomorrow we will see this configuration of creation of all these things right so then you can understand that not a concern Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, guys. Uh, mm. yes, so in our standard SAP, we can't assign same storage location to multiple plans. Is is this a standard uh, SAP behavior, right? Which one you're talking about? With the one which Ganapati just mm -hmm. asked. But so, however, the combination should be unique, basically. Okay. I I didn't get you. Can you repeat it? No, no, Combination. No, what, no, what, what was Ganapati was telling is like the same storage location. If he wants to use it for a multiple plants, okay. Same storage location. That is what he has asked me. If I'm not wrong, uh, right, Ganapati? Someone has asked me. Uh, oh, Mohan. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Even in the EWM also, whether it is possible or not, he has said that. Yeah. So it is possible, but however, we will be having a different party entitled dispose there because in the EWM system, we'll be assigning the plant and the storage locations. However, that will be differentiated with a different one. How that will be differentiated with your party entitled dispose and a different availability group that can be done here. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. 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 Yeah. That's the, the anyhow, that's the one which we'll be seeing it uh, in tomorrow's session. Don't worry about that. Okay. Okay, fine. No problem, guys. Okay, thank you then. Okay, so let's catch up tomorrow and then we will see the rest of the things and then we'll start configuring it. Okay, okay, thank you. Sir. Okay, then, thank you, guys. Thank, thank you so much. Thank yeah. you.